can you imagine waking up from a, a coma, being told that uh, you shouldn't be alive? Oh, and by the way, you'll never move your legs ever again. The spinal cord injury community is made up of over 300,000 individuals. On average, somewhere between 15 and 20,000 people are injured a year. So this is a community that unfortunately keeps growing. A vehicle accident, a fall, a sports injury, in an instant, somebody's life has changed forever. When a spinal cord injury happens, that individual loses not only function, they lose independence. And you could feel the pain that people are suffering. This is a tough, lifestyle. We just want to bring some hope back and we want to give them the ability to do the basic things in life again. I'm going to pull the chair up from behind him. I think it's important to note that our bodies are electric. We have electrical signals in the heart, we have electrical signals in the brain. The spinal cord is essentially an information superhighway. It conveys information between the brain and the rest of the body and all of those messages have to get from the brain down to the body. But then there also are messages that have to go from the body back up to the brain. Messages like, where are you in space? What's touching you? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it painful? When we have a spinal cord injury, what happens is there's a blockage in that highway. Why is it when I cut my hand or I bruise my hand, it heals, and yet I do the same thing on my spinal cord and it doesn't? When you damage your central nervous system, it's different. The body does a really good job of protecting the spine. And there's molecules in there that inhibit repair. What we see is that the greatest amount of recovery is gonna happen in the first three to six months after somebody's injury. And then the trajectory of the recovery starts to slow down. After a year in a chronic phase, people have pretty much plateaued and that's where they will be for the rest of their lives. NVG291 is an investigational drug candidate. It is designed um, to help repair nervous system damage. NVG291 is a drug candidate that's uh, in development right now. What our drug does is it focuses on an inhibitor, and we actually turn that inhibitor off and allow the body's natural mechanisms to repair. It's taking that blockade and it's moving it out of the way allowing the central nervous system to do what it naturally can already do. So it really is an elegant approach to this nervous system damage problem. Shirley Bryan Ability Lab is who we partnered with, uh, and it's a perfect fit because they're the number one rehabilitation hospital in the U.S. for the past 30 plus years. Our hospital is the first of its kind. It's a rehabilitation hospital that pioneer the interactions between clinicians and scientists. Between our nurses, our clinical team, our physicians, and then our researchers in the lab, everyone kind of brings a different perspective into that. It kind of creates a nice comfort and oversight on the patients and their care. Team effort, now together with Shirley Ryan Ability Lab and NerveGen, actually we embark in a new way of establishing the baseline of clinical trials to enhance rehabilitation outcomes for our patients. This is a trial that's gonna go on for 16 weeks and requires everybody that participates not only to get that drug each day, but to work out, to go through a rehabilitative process that's standardized and to do it in a way that is, you know, state of the art. This trial has a very unique design in which we're using electrophysiology, which is a tool to assess descending connections from the brain to muscles. We're studying connectivity. So we're looking at whether there are signals going from the brain past the site of injury in the spine to the limbs, the hands and the legs. We're measuring the improvement in those connections over time. The beautiful advantage of incorporating electrophysiology into the study is that not only can we measure the usual clinical outcome measures, but we have an objective and a quantitative tool to measure the connections, the electrical connections to the muscle. That'll give us a, a window of insight that we just haven't had in the past in a way that wouldn't be possible with a less specific therapy. Electrophysiology is hugely important. If we're changing and making those connections, we're gonna see it. And if we do, we know the drug is working. Can we try again? Very good. 
Yeah, that's a good response. Even if there is a small increment in the amplitude of a connection, that is a tremendous success in the trial because those connections are the foundation for any voluntary movement. If we can demonstrate improved connectivity, it's never been done before. No one's ever shown that you can actually make connections again. Then the second step is function, functional improvement. If there is a formation of new connections by this uh, drug, we can actually guide those new connections by doing exercise rehabilitation. Yes. Very good. You can make connections, but to turn them into function, you have to work those muscles. And that's why we partnered with Shirley Ryan Ability Labs, because they're experts in electrophysiology and they're experts in rehabilitation. If you combine their expertise with our expertise, which is MVG 291 and allowing the body to regenerate and regrow, it's a great partnership. It's a connection, it's a win-win for science and it's a win-win for the rehabilitation world together. People are coming in after a major catastrophe and if we can help them regain even a small amount of what they lost in that accident, anything that can help improve even marginally someone's life, I would count as a success. When we talk about spinal cord injury, unfortunately right now, we don't have an intervention that has been shown to cure that injury or to help improve function after about a year or two out. So if it is effective, this would be a huge breakthrough. NPG 291 has the potential to impact the quality of life of patients with spinal cord injury. We have to learn from this trial. To help the field move forward, we have to learn from it. Like, what comes next? The importance of this trial is not just for spinal cord injury. It's to show that this drug works. And if we can prove that, then we can get into many other areas that have been demonstrated preclinically in animal models, like stroke, um, multiple sclerosis. This is a platform. This is not just a drug. And it's actually an, an economic opportunity as well. The average cost of a young person who has a spinal cord injury to society is $10 million. This is a $50 billion a year cost. That's one of the highest of any disease or condition that is covered by insurance. So I personally think that we are at a turning point. What these folks need is hope. The lineup for people to get this is going to be absolutely incredible. The drug industry for a couple of decades has been trying to help spinal cord injury and all of those efforts have failed. With this trial, um, you're seeing for the first time excitement in the community. It's not sitting in the lab, it's in the clinic. It's at Shirley Ryan Ability Lab and actually going into patients. So it's been a very, very exciting time. This could be the drug that we're all waiting for. Mm -hmm.